Now, in general, uh, it is possible to calculate some descriptive statistics using a pivot table. Now, this is not the best way to calculate statistics if you want a lot of descriptive statistics, because the statistics you can calculate in a pivot table are rather limited. But they can give you some highlights, and especially if you want to calculate them by categories, you want to break your uh, data up into um, subcategories, maybe by some other variable, then the pivot table can be really um, powerful. So let's look at how to calculate some statistics with pivot tables. And again, they're only going to allow for the most basic statistics. So we highlight our data, we go to insert, we select our pivot table, and then this is our, our data range. And I'm going to select pasting the table here. And um, if you want to just calculate descriptive statistics, one descriptive statistic for a single variable, then you can just select that. And if it's a numerical variable, it will go straight to the values. Now, the default calculation for a single statistic like this is the sum, which isn't much of a statistic. So we go to, we click on this box, we select value field settings, and now we can select from some common statistics. So like the average. And so it's calculated the average of square feet. We can also select the maximum. We can select the minimum. We can select the standard deviation. And we have some other ones in here, uh, the population standard deviation, um, the variance, both population and the default uh, sample standard deviation. But that's basically it. And so you can't calculate the median or the quartiles or um, anything more advanced than the average and the min, the max, and the median. And that uh, the min, the max, and the standard deviation, that's about it. Um, but if you select um, multiple instances of square feet in this um, list, you can, of course, then um, specify different um, statistics. And so you can create a nice little table of whatever these specific common statistics are. But as I noted in the opening, this is actually more useful uh, when we want to break down the, the numerical data, the square foot data, by uh, some category. So I have put some fake neighborhood data over here. And we can now create a pivot table of these descriptive statistics by neighborhood. Now, typically when you break them down like this, you don't need quite as many descriptive statistics. And so this is the occasion when the pivot table can tend to be handy. Um, so again, we select the pivot table. Um, we're gonna put it here. The data range is this. And now what I'm gonna select is the neighborhood to go into the rows. and the square feet to go into the values. Now again, the default is still to sum it, but now I can change this to let's say average. And so it will calculate the average within each category. And so uh, the grand total quote unquote will be the average of all of the data collectively. But then I can see, well, it looks like the neighborhoods in the Southwest have that again, arbitrarily selected for the Southwest, have slightly lower uh, square footage here. And the North and the East are, are actually slightly more similar. The North has slightly more um, square footage, um, the largest of all of them. So you can, you can break these down and so you can do comparisons by neighborhood. And again, if you drag your square feet, again, then you can select additional 
let's say maybe the standard deviation, you can select additional statistics that calculate um, the north is the largest. It also has the smallest standard deviation, which is interesting. So it can give you some breakdowns. And when you're doing these breakdowns like this, you tend not to need uh, a wide diversity of descriptive statistics, just some basic ones. But if you need more advanced descriptive statistics, uh, like the medians or the quartiles, you can't do it in the pivot table. <clears throat> 